What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. You know, normally we would cover like a DC video today, but I just discovered that there are Fight Club comics, like Fight Fight Club comics, that basically follow up to the original film. Now, uh, spoilers. These comics are going to have spoilers. Uh, for those who haven't seen Fight Club, I mean, I don't know anybody who hasn't seen it, but those who haven't seen Fight Club, here's my question. If you haven't seen Fight Club, why? It's like one of the best movies of 1999. Like, dude, okay, David Fincher has made all kinds of cool movies. He made like, like World War Z, and he made Seven. He did Alien 3, but we'll sweep that under the rug. He made all kinds of amazing movies, like, over the years. Fight Club is probably the best. It's Dude, Fight Club. Oh my God. Tyler Durden, Tyler Durden, Tyler Durden. Dude, it's one of the, man, it's one of the coolest things. I love that scene where Marla says that when he calls her up asking like, who's Tyler? Like, who am I? What's my name? She's like, Tyler Durden. And I was just like, I was like, oh my God. Dude, it was, it was like one of the coolest reveals ever in the history of movies. Like, like that's why Fight Club is so popular. Like, that's why it's so cool because the movie's just amazing, but it's like one of the best reveals ever. And if you were looking at, if you knew what you were looking for, then you could pick up almost right off the bat what was actually going on, especially when Brad Pitt first shows up. So, uh, picking up with Fight Club 2. Now, here's the thing. This takes place 10 years after the original Fight Club. And it was kind of interesting because Chuck Palahniuk was the one who wrote this story. And he's actually the one who wrote the original novel back in 1996. But one of the things that goes on is in the original Fight Club, in the movie, the, the character of Edward Norton is never named. You never actually know the name of his character. He's just referred to as the narrator. And in the book, it's the exact same way. But what this does is it kind of adjusts that. And it says that this guy now goes by the name of Sebastian. And that's probably done just for the purpose of being able to write the story. Uh, because in reality, trying to translate the original Fight Club theme to a comic book would seem kind of difficult to do. Like it would seem wildly difficult to do. So what this does, again, picking up 10 years after, the life of Tyler Durden is actually pretty mundane. It's pretty boring here. And the reason why is because he's kind of moved on to a life outside of everything. And he's left his whole, like, he left the whole army behind, right? Like Project Mayhem, he left all that stuff behind. That's all basically gone here. And so from this point, it's a matter of him just trying to cope with his life. And what we end up finding out is he's basically just been taking like a series of pills in order to keep from going crazy. Now, the other indication here is is that he has a younger son. There is a girl here. She looks more akin to a babysitter than anything else, but he does have a younger son. And this is kind of the crazy thing. The younger son is showing something akin to the similarities that Tyler Durden had when, or I guess that, that Sebastian had when he was Tyler Durden. God, this is getting a little bananas already. The reason why I say that is if you remember back to the film, and we'll touch a little bit more on the film's themes in this in this comic. But if you remember back to the film, you ended up having this scenario where uh, Tyler Durden was, I guess, you know, Edward Norton's character was basically, you know, exploring with different things like, uh, like, like creating, uh, uh, nitroglycerin, different things like that. And he was going through and creating like these devices that could be used to like cause as much destruction and, and literally mayhem as humanly possible. His son is doing the same thing, but the difference here is that his son doesn't seem to have split personalities. Instead, his son is doing it because he's just curious. And that's the question is, who was it that taught him how to do that? And we're not immediately given the answer to the question. And the reason why is because what Sebastian has been doing has been popping pills to suppress the Tyler Durden personality. And this has been going on for 10 years. And so there's no indication that Tyler Durden is actually back. Instead, like he's essentially out of the picture now. And so then it becomes a question of has Sebastian broken himself and is he the one teaching his son to do all these things? So it gets kind of nuts because from here it switches over to the character of Marla Singer. Now Marla was interesting in the first fight club because as most of you guys remember her and Tyler met at one of those uh, one of those self-help groups. I can't remember which one it was that they met at but the whole idea behind uh, Edward Norton's character was that he suffered from insomnia and the only way he could relieve his insomnia was going to like these self-help groups and receiving like you know a base, not really adoration so much as like sympathy. And the result was that it became came somewhat of a drug to him. Now, eventually he encountered Marla at one of those organizations and he immediately spotted her as being a, being a false person. Like she wasn't, she didn't suffer from any of the things that she claimed she did. And so for her, it was more of like an addiction kind of a thing. It was, they were both suffering from like major issues. And so what they did is they kind of paired up. Of course, she gave him her number and they agreed to kind of stay, so like switch groups. They would never go to the same group. They would always go to their own alternate groups. And as, as screwed up as it was, it was actually kind of cool. And so the two of them basically went forward and essentially kind of started, well, not really started a romance, there were more, there were more like uh, acquaintances than anything else, kind of like an on again, off again friendship, if there is such a thing. For her, she ends up going to one of these groups where it's basically individuals that suffer from uh, progeria syndrome. Those individuals who have uh, have an illness where their genes are kind of screwed up, they can't bond with the right proteins. And what this means is that they have accelerated aging, but they're they're mentally young. And so, like for example, one of them says that they're nine years old. Another one says, or I guess it'll be nine next month. The other one says they're eleven years old. Marla shows up here and says, "Well, I'm suffering from like a mild version." This is the thing about her character. 
It's, it's kind of the way she is. Not only that, it works exceedingly well, and I would expect nothing less. The guy who wrote the original book is a guy who's writing this comic, and so it's, it, you can't really argue that it's not it's not the way the character's supposed to be because I mean you know it's his character you know but but still the thing about Marla is she's very devil may care. She puts off this air that like she doesn't really care about anything that like nothing really matters to her at all. When in reality there's a lot of things that matter to her, but it's almost kind of like a defense mechanism. Uh, it's one of those things where you kind of have to go see the movie in order to really understand what her character is like. But the problem with this is that as she's going through, she's really just kind of venting about her husband, about Sebastian, and simply saying that like he's a weakling now compared to the man that she used to know. And the reason why is because eventually in the film, she basically starts sleeping with Sebastian's other personality with Tyler Durden. And the result is that she falls in love with that version of Edward Norton's character. And so that means that like, that's all she really knows. She doesn't know like the other side, the more toned down side, the more relaxed side, the side that's trying to figure himself out, that's very insecure uh, and is very, very weak, you know, emotionally and, and physically, or at least it seems that way. And so she falls in love with his darker half. Now, eventually she realizes what's going on. Once you get to like the end scene and all that, all that different stuff, she kind of understands what's taking place. And that's why the two of them have kind of come together. But for her, she does not like the version of her husband that pops pills and gets rid of the Tyler Durden side. She wants the darker side of her husband back, the darker personality. And so it gets kind of cool because all she does is sit around complaining about him. Well, what he does is he actually goes through and starts going through all her searches, looking at all the groups she's supposed to be at and figures out which one she's at. And so when he goes to the lobby with the intention of, you know, presenting her with flowers and wishing her a happy anniversary, he interrupts her while she's basically talking bad about him, while she's tearing him down and talking about how much of a weakling he is and so on and so forth. And rightfully, he feels betrayed. And this really kind of like crushes him emotionally. Now, the other thing about this is, is it really kind of references back to the bar scene. Now, the bar scene from Fight Club is like one of the coolest scenes ever because that's really where Fight Club starts. You end up having uh, having Tyler Durden's character. I think it was Tyler Durden's character who said, punch me as hard as you. No, I'm sorry. It was Edward Norton. I think who said, punch me as hard as you can. Something like that. Anyway, one of them instigates a fight with the other and they kind of break into a fight with each other. Well, as they go back to the bar and they constantly get in these fights, it attracts a crowd. And that in turn leads to going in the basement of the bar and starting the fight club. And so it's, it's, it's really, really cool because like that's where it all started when she kind of has these flashbacks to her, you know, to what her husband used to be. Now, ultimately you end up finding out that Edward Norton was fighting himself, but still like it's, it's a, it's a cool moment, but she really kind of looks at the darker side of her husband who was kind of out there because that's what you learned about Edward Norton's character. That the, the character of Brad Pitt was basically like, he literally told him, I'm everything you wish you could be. Like I'm the guy who does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, and doesn't really care about anybody else. I'm carefree. I do whatever makes me happy. And for the character of Edward Norton, he was weak, but like, he was emotionally and, and, and physically weak. And so he didn't really have what it took for that side of himself. And so he, you know, he ended up having, you know, Tyler Durden who kind of took over. And it's kind of a cool thing because when he gets home, his wife really kind of treats him like crap. And he ends up, of course, you know, driving off and, and so on and, and going to a bar. This is one of the cool things because when he goes there, he ends up, you know, intending to buy a drink. And the guy says, well, your money's no good here. Now, again, this is an important moment. And the reason why is because when Sebastian goes to pay, he has this mark on his hand and the guy hands his money back with the same mark on his hand. Now, that was kind of like a calling sign. That was a way to show that you were part of the Fight Club. And that went back to when uh, Brad Pitt, when, when Tyler Durden, you know, when, when Brad Pitt and I guess Sebastian, for the sake of the story, when they took up residence in the dilapidated house and he ended up creating lie and then pouring it on his hand and then just sort of, you know, sat there and gave himself like this, this gross scar on his hand. It was designed to kind of say like, this is your measure of being able to endure pain. This is you being reborn. And, and it was a mark of saying like, you have transitioned from the person you used to be to the new person that you are now. And so it's kind of like a, you know, again, like, kind of a sigil saying like, you've officially joined Project Mayhem. And so this guy is part of their ranks. It's basically Chuck Palahniuk's way of telling us like in this story that, that Project Mayhem is alive and well because it was never truly eliminated. Like Project Mayhem was never like defeated. It's not like all the members of Project Mayhem were killed at the end of Fight Club. They were still out there. The other part of this that we end up learning about Marla is that what she's been doing has actually been like changing the pills of her of, of Sebastian, of, of her husband's character. She's been switching his pills up. Instead of him taking the pills he's supposed to be taking with the medication inside, instead, it's been things like sugar or aspirin. It's basically been placebos, which means that as far as we can tell, the character of Tyler Durden is not gone. He's basically just kind of waiting to make his return. And it's kind of a cool moment here because what ends up happening is you end up having like, you know, Sebastian going through and mowing the lawn and kind of going crazy when like the dog's barking and carrying on. And then of course that night, you know, it, it's really just kind of like, well, that's the neighbor's, that's, you know, the neighbor's dog and, and he keeps throwing his dog poop over the fence and things like that. It's these small little things that go on that kind of begin to like bring back the character of Tyler Durden because for the for Sebastian in the original Fight Club, he was like the passion, he was like a, he was in the passenger seat of his own life. And so he didn't really have any control of anything. He was just kind of along for the ride. His life was out of control. And so Tyler Durden kind of took it back in control. And this is what this does is it presents a scenario and simply saying that like everything's going the same direction. All of this has happened before and all of it will happen again if you believe Battlestar Galactica. But it's, it's, it's kind of a, a cool thing here because it's just sort of setting the stage for Tyler
Tyler Durden to come back. The medicine he's taking isn't working because it's not actually medicine, and the circumstances of his life are pushing him closer and closer to the edge. And so in this moment, what he does is he's, he says, basically, fine, I'm going to go talk to the neighbor. Like, I'm going to go talk to Coffee, and we're going to get this all sorted out. And then he shows back up at home with, like, a black eye. Now, of course, this turns into Marla, like, approaching him and trying to, you know, initiate uh, intercourse between the two of them, which she does, but it's not actually Sebastian she's sleeping with. And we can tell that simply from the art that she's basically sleeping with Tyler Durden, his dark personality. Now, so that means, like, that side of himself is coming out. Now, of course, this also shows the insomnia of Sebastian is coming back in again. And so it's, again, setting the stage for the return of Tyler and all these things going back to the way they were before. And so what happens is you have Sebastian who goes to a hypnotist, goes to a therapist for one of his daily sessions, and when he's hypnotized, he's basically thrown into the back seat again, and then when the hypnotist snaps, Tyler Durden emerges. And so that's when we end up finding out that in all these times of his life, much like in the original Fight Club, where Edward Norton thought he was sleeping, and it was actually Tyler Durden just running around and doing things, that's exactly what's happening right now. It's basically this scenario where you end up having, like, Tyler Durden, who's basically been running the show the entire time. Like, he's, he's been literally orchestrating all these events, setting all these things in motion, continuing the efforts of Project Mayhem, and actually expanding it to a global scale. It was already on its way there in the original Fight Club, but now, like, it's full on in that level. And it's really cool. And it's really, really awesome to see. Because you end up having, like, Sebastian wakes up, and he's got Tyler Durden sitting over him. And that's kind of the funny thing here. It's a bit of a dance on the wild side, and kind of bending your imagination a bit, because Chuck Palahniuk almost presents this idea that, like, Tyler Durden's a wholly different character. And it makes sense, because in the original Fight Club, Edward Norton was hallucinating his other personality. His other personality had a physical form, insofar that only Edward Norton could see him. But it was a way to interact with his own personality. And so that's kind of what's happening here, is that this is, there, there really is no Tyler Durden here. There's no guy with the blonde hair. It's just, it's it's Sebastian hallucinating it all, and, and imagining it all in his own head, but believing all of it is real. And so when he and Marla wake up, a fire has been set inside the home. And that's when you really kind of have to draw the conclusion that Sebastian was the one who set it. And so where you end up having Marla, and you end up having Sebastian who bail out of the house, they end up realizing that their son's still in there. And so when Tyler goes to reach for the door, it burns him. There's no real way for him to get in. And the result is that the entire house just starts burning down around him with his son trapped inside. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. And yeah, God, I love Fight Club. I will catch you all later. Peace.